Welcome back. Uh, I've decided to make this blog or this small documentary in English because uh, I presume that there are loads of people that are not Swedish. Although uh, Dr. Kuhn de Smith has uh, done surgery on approximately 200 and 250 Swedes, so that's uh, quite amazing. Um, but not uh, that's nothing compared to how many he has done uh, completely, which is over 10,000 uh, surgeries, hip surgeries. Uh, this is like the first episode, actually, because I'm going to talk a little bit who I am, where I am right now, and um, how my hip problems started, and... Uh, um, what I tried to do about them and how I got linked to uh, Dr. Kuhn de Smith. So, here we go. Where am I right now? Where, well, I'm in Ghent in Belgium at the Marriott Hotel. I have had surgery for uh, a bilateral, that means both sides, uh, hip arthritis, and it was quite severe. Um, and it was exactly one week ago. So it's pretty amazing that I'm sitting here with absolutely zero pain. It's gone. I've had pain for six years. Uh, radiating pain down my legs. Uh, referred pain to upwards to my back, uh, in my groin. Um, I had uh, movement, functional movement disorders or un, uh, an unbalanced body and nothing of, the, of that is left it's gone it's like a magic wand but sting uh, and I'm better and I actually never thought that it would be this good as it is right now so I'm so happy and thankful towards everyone here in Ghent and Ron van Mierlo who has the great uh, website, I think it's in Swedish, I don't know if he has it in, in English too, uh, it's called resurfacingscan.be, like in Belgium, resurfacingscan.be. Who am I? My name is Nicola Tramontana, but uh, everyone who knows me calls me Nicky, so you can do that too now, if you want to. Uh, that's an N. I K I nothing else. I am 43 years old, uh, born and raised in Sweden, uh, from a uh, suburb to Stockholm, uh, uh, a northern suburb, and uh, no, a southern su uh, suburb. I'm always like to train, exercise, move my body. Uh, I'm a swimmer from starters, so I started to swim. In, in a club when I was approximately five years old and I continued swimming till I were, were, was uh, 17. Besides that I've been alpine skiing, uh, snowboarding, uh, the only thing that I didn't like was uh, uh, ball sports like tennis or football or stuff like that because I'm too much of an individualist so I just wanted to have the ball and score. And uh, that's not so popular when you play in a team. Um, after that, I grew up and I went to the military service. And why I'm talking about this is because I backtracked that to my history of bad hips. Uh, I made my military service at the um, um, at the Arctic Rangers, the special Swedish special forces, uh, at K4 in Arvidsjaur. That's in the northern of Sweden. It's a really tough education. You carry around a rucksack, a backpack, that weighs approximately 55 kilos. Uh, and uh, you do that for very, very many days and miles and kilometers and meters. And uh, maybe, maybe, maybe that's where, where it all started. I also started doing martial arts when I was... 13 years old, I started with karate, a fighting type of style of karate, 
and I did that for quite a long time when I eventually uh, got into Muay Thai, Thai boxing, uh, and I did that for a couple of years. And then I continued to train martial arts uh, during my life. And the, in the latest years, uh, I picked it up again and started to train Kyukushin Karate, the hardest of styles. No, I'm just kidding. There's many other styles that are equally hard. Uh, but it's full contact and it's very much impact sport. Um, well, uh, the last 20 years I've been doing a lot of triathlon uh, races, triathlon races, mostly sprint distance and Olympic distance. But the, uh, in the latest years, later years, I've been going up the distances. So I've been doing half Ironmans and Approximately two years ago, I made a full distance Ironman at Mallorca. It was a fantastic experience, but uh, regarding uh, me weighing at the time at uh, 93 kilos, um, the swimming went well, fantastic, wasn't hard at all. The biking went fantastic. You have these Tramontana mountains. Uh, at the north, northeast end of Mallorca. And I knew that they would come after 110 kilometers and it was 30 kilometers uphill. And I thought, if I can conquer the mountains that bear my surname, Tramontana, I can conquer anything in life, even bad hips. And I did. But then it came to the running. It was actually my first marathon. I uh, uh, I ran it uh, and it went quite good in the beginning but in the end it was really tough and it hurt everywhere my feet my knees my hips my back my shoulders my head and my soul was beaten to pieces uh, but I didn't give up I managed to get the applause and the roars from the public and when I went into the goal I pointed on my uh, um, number uh, plate or whatever you call it uh, uh, and they shouted out Nicola Tramontana you are an Iron Man and everyone started to cheer and that was one of the best feelings I have ever experienced I often take that up when I need some more when I need some extra inspiration you can do so much more than you ever think is possible in life. When it hurts, it hurts, but it's still just a feeling. It's mainly in your head. You can focus on other things and do other stuff. The Almost the worst part for pain is uh, being still. So keep, keep on moving, move around, move your system so the healing goes faster. I've been a group instructor in... Mo in the most things you can find in a gym. I've been a gym owner together with my wife Anna for 18 years, a successful gym and that uh, we sold last year and been instru instructing in all everything from heat training to spinning to power yoga to yin yoga, step up classes, everything you can imagine. So I've always been moving quite a lot. As a profession, I work as something called legitimerad naprapat in Swedish. That's licensed naprapat. And it's not so famous in uh, other areas than Scandinavia. You have them uh, almost everywhere now. But um, it's, it's origins from the States. And the origin is from osteopathics and chiropractics. So it's, it originated in 1905 by a chiropractor and a doctor called Oakley Smith. And he found, founded the name naprapathy, the art of finding the cause of illness and treat it. That's uh, about what it uh, stands for. And a naprapath is a manual therapist that works a lot with connective tissue and muscle disorders. Uh, we also work quite a lot with rehabilitation training, with 
exercise, motion and nutrition, and sports in injuries. Uh, my my focus area is uh, exercise and training. So I've been working as a personal trainer beside my profession as a uh, licensed naturopath for 18 years and uh, I've had about 35,000 client meetings since I started this profession for a little more than 20 years ago. Um, nowadays I work with leadership, educational, uh, like leadership educa education and leadership coaching. Uh, we work uh, with our company called Forum Holistic here in Sweden, but we also do some, uh, we take uh, job opportunities all around the world actually. So if the client wants us and can pay for it, we'll travel. I love to lecture, I love to give inspirational speeches, uh, and I like to work with practical change management. And we always combine that with health. So that's a little bit about me. It's an introduction, so you know a little bit more who I am, and maybe it will give you some sense of trust that I actually know what I'm talking about. All right, so the years before my surgery, if, if I backtrack it really long, I can track my life, how I, how I, how I have spent it. Uh, I can see that I have done violence to my hips, but the problems didn't occur before six years ago. So uh, uh, I've always been flexible. Um, being into martial arts and yoga and stuff, it creates a great flexibility. And, and I think that is one of the reasons I have, had managed it so well during the years of pain. Uh, I was at a yoga class at, at the place called Yoga Yama in Stockholm. And it was a yin yoga class. It was not fast at all. It was really, really soft and beautiful. And we sat with the legs crossed like this, and my right leg stood up like this. I couldn't get it down because it was like a lock in my hip. I couldn't understand where it came from because it wasn't muscular. And um, even though I'm professional, I couldn't diagnose myself because I was just thinking, what is this? Have I my uh, joint capsule stiff or whatever is well, okay so I started to stretch it out and if you read the literature literature uh, you can see that this what, I, what I'm going to tell you now is quite common so I started to work with it as if it's just a stiff joint or uh, connective tissue disorder or whatever a muscular problem and I eventually got the movement out and it, it just went very well for approximately one, one and a half year. I didn't, ha I didn't have so much pain at all. It was just some muscular uh, pain and, and uh, some back pain. After that, I was out biking with my wife and uh, the mountain biking. And it wasn't too tricky, but at what one part of the course, I was just lifting the bike a little bit and my back exploded in pain. So there was such much pain in my back, I couldn't do anything. I couldn't, couldn't continue biking. I had to lead my bike home and uh, I, was, I was in really bad shape. But as usual, you take some painkillers, you treat yourself, you start to move and suddenly it's manageable and uh, the show must go on so I continued with my group training instructions and ah, everything got better after a while. I, always, I almost forgot about it and uh, the thing that started then I started to get referred pain down my leg not like neurological but like muscular uh, referred pain. Anyways after this we went to Manhattan New York for my wife's 40th 
birthday. And we decided to run across Manhattan all the time. Or actually, my wife decided that because she's such a power pack. She just goes out and runs and tells me to join. And I can't say no to that because then I'll feel lousy because I didn't join her. And uh, we ran and the longest distance was we were sleeping right near Central Park. And we went down to Hudson River to the side and down to Brooklyn Bridge and ran up Broadway. So that day we ran 24 kilometers. And uh, we were really, really beaten afterwards. Uh, up again next morning, run a shorter distance. And um, we really enjoyed it. It was, it was a fantastic way of seeing town. But I got the most severe cramp and pain feeling that I have had had since. And that's how the shit started. So it actually started with pain right here in my hip. And it cramped on the side and started to radiate down my thigh, down toward my ankle and started to create pain upwards to my uh, lower back into my groin like this and I got help from my wife who works with the same profession as I do so I actually have really good so I could run the day after but after that it never came back as good as it had been before so that thing created something and the worst part that started to occur was that I was starting to feel that my ad abduction, lifting the uh, legs outwards from the middle point, the abduction started to decrease. So it was smaller and smaller range of motion. And I got like an impingement syndrome. It started to pinch in my hips in a way I've never felt before. And this is... Uh, Around the same time, I started to train karate again. So I started to kick, and I've always been good at kicking uh, high kicks and spinning kicks. But I noticed that I wasn't as good as I've been. And I just thought it was age or something. I, was, I mean, I haven't trained for a while. and uh, But it wasn't, because it went down. Went, went worse and worse and worse and worse. At one gradua graduation, uh, karate for a belt, um, during uh, Christmas time, a couple of years ago, I was in so much pain. I even got fever after it. Uh, and I felt that I couldn't get down in this position. Uh, so in Zen Zenku Tsudachi, a really low position where you have the starting you stand with your feet like this and squat down. You just heard it. So I started to work with flexibility movements in that way. So I quit karate and I just went into some kind of depressive state because it hurt it so much. And uh, I didn't talk so much about it, but just kept on doing stuff, but I felt really bad. 2017, I think, we were in the Alps, in Zillertal, a really great alpine area. And uh, one of my kids, my boy, uh, he fell higher up in the slopes and couldn't get up. Uh, so I had to rush up to him with the boots on and the skis and I suddenly felt something snap in my hip and I thought oh that's not good and then it started to crawl up my back and my back hurted as I don't know what I have never felt it before so I went down to the pharmacy in town and uh, bought some painkillers and continued skiing because uh, we were there for holiday and and we were there with the family and I wanted to ski and it actually didn't get worse of, but from skiing it went worse when I was still 
ceiling still and so on. Uh, but then it just continued and my wife said to me, Nikki, now you have to go to get an x-ray. I was like, no, I don't want to. I was afraid to see because I had my thoughts about what this was and what, what was going on around and um, uh, but uh, in some way it was like a security uh, grid in front of my eyes that said that okay don't go to the hospital don't do the x-ray because you will see what you know just continue you can do this but then eventually I went to get an x-ray and they saw that I had quite severe uh, arthritis mainly in my right hip and um, starting it, it was showing some signs of arthritis in my left hip but I also had phi femoral acetabular impingement syndrome so you have your uh, your femur bone uh, your bone here so it goes down like this and you have your femur neck here column uh, and uh, this is the column chirurgicum uh, so the femur neck and you have the head of your femur where your joint head is um, so they, then you get a, like a bony lump so it starts to create bone as a protection on your femur head down to your femur neck here so when the joint tries to move like normal this bump just touches in towards the acetabulum, the, uh, the cup in the joint, in, the, in your pelvis. So it creates an impingement, punk, up there all the time. It goes up there and you get an irritation. And you get something called a cam or a pincher syndrome from that. So an inflammation surrounding the joint capsule and the labrum the lip of the uh, acetabulum so I got that on both hips so then I googled it and I saw you can do anything you can get rid of your five syndromes with these top three exercises and I started to exercise those three exercises and five exercises and ten exercises and um, it actually didn't get any better uh, but it, it didn't get any worse either. The thing that helped me the most was, was when my wife, again, told me, you need to train your legs, you need to train your butt, you need to do squats, you need to do lunges, you need to put on weight. And when I did that, when I did really hard leg presses, uh, weighted lunges, uh, squatting, it actually started to lower my sense of pain. That was a fantastic feeling because then I was thinking, hmm, maybe I'm one of the persons that can heal arthritis. Uh, I have no problem. So fast forward one year, I um, contacted this guy, Ron Mierlo, Ron van Mierlo, Mierlo, who has a, a great web page called resurfacingscan.be and I said my problems are worse. Uh, was there any possibility that Dr. Smith uh, could look at me again? And he said yes, but we need new x-rays. Um, so I got the new x-rays this summer actually in May um, or June and uh, got them back so it was had been a really big progress in my symptoms so not only was the right hip really arthritic arthritis oh, damaged by arthritis my left hip, hip was even worse than the right now well what could I do so he said you know what <clears throat> Dr. Smith has a slot free uh, at the 22nd of August. And that was like seven weeks away. 
I said, okay, I'll take it. And that's how I came here. The first person that recommended this, recommended me to check this up was another guy that I had as an employee, as an instructor at our gym. He's called Peter Bukt. He's a great martial, art, martial artist. And I remember that I heard something about he doing a special hip replacement surgery. So I was asked him, did you do this? Yes, I did it in Belgium with Dr. Kunde Smet. Do you have any pains? No, nothing. Can you do martial arts again? Yeah. And he showed a video of a great spinning roundhouse kick that he does. And um, I was thinking, wow, I want to be able to do that too. So here I am. So stay tuned for the next episode where I will talk a little bit more about the syndrome and uh, <clears throat> I mean the hip arthritis and the origin uh, the origin of arthritis and and <clears throat> what you can do to treat it before it gets really bad uh, and the difference between hip resurfacing and uh, hip replacement I mean total hip hip replacement and what other stuff you could do to uh, manage your your uh, your uh, arthritis in a good way and maybe if you recognize the symptoms you might have to take an x-ray and then i have a just one suggestion for you just do it don't wait it's never too late to be better okay see you next time bye